today we're going to have a look at an experiment that I tried to perform here. This is an experiment in die forming or die forging HDPE plastic. The intention was for this to be a little seven well artist's mixing palette. As you can see it didn't exactly work out right. Um, these bits in the middle aren't meant to be here and it's very poor definition, it's discoloured and it's just a bit misshapen. It was an interesting experiment though, so keep watching if you don't mind watching me fail. Failures are sometimes just as interesting as success. So here we go, this is how I tried to do HDPE press forging. My forging mould for this plastic is going to be made of two nice thick bits of scrap ply which will provide the spreading force and an inner layer of MDF which is about uh, about 6mm, about 6mm MDF. So I, I need to cut some little circles out of this first and then we'll, well it'll all make sense in a minute when I start putting it together. Right so we're going to cut some circles out of this MDF. Now you all told me off of working in my Crocs so as you can see I've got boots on today, hope that's okay. Right let's get started. give these pieces a little bit of a sand to take those woolly edges off just tidy them up a little bit right so I've got my paper template on top of my piece of MDF I'm just going to mark through the vertices so that those will be my drill hole points So now I need to go with the larger hole saw and cut holes on those centres. Okay, I've used the slightly larger hole saw to cut the negative part of my mould. I'm just going to run a bit of sandpaper over the top of that just to take off those woolly edges. It's a fairly cold day so I should end up with a slightly longer working time for this epoxy than I might normally enjoy. So let's get the glue next. Okay, I reckon we must be about there now. So that flips over onto this side, we line it up square with the edges and the base there and off we go. So a little bit of glue, not too much, it just needs a thin layer. A little bit of glue on that disc like that. Thin layer because it's MDF to plywood so there's no gaps to fill and then we'll just drop that into that hole and line it up so okay that's the last one of those in place they all look pretty much aligned that's good okay so I think what we'll do now is glue on this this onto this board here since we've got the glue mixed up I'm going to take that off of there carefully set that aside because I don't want to move those pieces and then I need to glue these pieces together so let's spread some glue thinly on here then. and we'll just press that down make sure it's completely aligned with the edges and the bottom here because that's the thing that's making it the same as the top. Okay, that's nicely pressed down. I think that's going to stick just fine. So that's my two pieces of my mould. I won't try putting them together at the moment because these are still setting. So let's leave that to set up and then we'll come back and try and use it.
Our source material today is going to be these plastic milk bottles. I'm using all one colour instead of my usual mixture of colours because of the properties I want in the finished piece. I have an idea about how I'm going to contain the pieces when I put them on the heater this time. What I'll do I'm going to keep that piece intact, pile all of my flakes of plastic into here and then put that in the heated press and squish it and hopefully that will work really well. This might be the first one of my HGPE recycling videos that you've ever watched, or maybe you've seen some of the others, but one of the comments I very often get in these videos is about how laborious this task of chopping up the plastic is. And people always suggest, can't you use a food processor, a paper shredder, uh, a garden waste shredder? Well, I have tried a lot of different things. None of them work very well. The food processor just doesn't touch it. Paper shredder just jams up. I haven't tried a garden waste shredder, but I don't think it would do any better than a food processor. You can get dedicated plastic shredding machines, which have very closely interlocking teeth, and I'm sure that would work really well. And I imagine probably a high-end food processor or blender, like a Blendtec, would probably uh, would probably mince this plastic up. So if somebody wants to send me a Blendtec, I'll be more than happy to give it a go. Uh, meanwhile, this is about using the tools you have at hand to achieve the result you want. So I am stuck with chopping this up into pieces like this. It doesn't really take all that long. I have a technique, I, I cut the bottles spirally into a long strip so that I'm not continually picking up pieces of plastic and stopping and starting and that way I can just crack on through it and cut up all the plastic into flakes like this. Doesn't really take all that long. If I was making things out of recycled H HDPE commercially, obviously I would have to look into some sort of larger scale shredding solution. But these are really just prototypes and experiments, so small scale works okay for me. about a quarter full now. Let's keep going until it's maybe two-thirds full and then it's probably enough plastic for our experiment. My glue has dried and those are well, they're nice and firm now. A little tip actually for epoxy, if you want to know when the glue in the joint is dry just don't throw away the, your mixing thing and then you can tell when this has gone hard and set you'll know that the glue in the joint is set as well, as long as it's at the same temperature. So, what we've got is two halves of a mould, and I can tell by the wiggle room there that those are still nicely registered. So let's get started with the old sandwich toaster and start melting our plastic. So while we're waiting for the sandwich toaster to come up to temperature, let's just answer the usual questions. I'll be using this today. This is Teflon coated fabric. These are baking sheets actually, so they're intended to be used for baking cakes and cookies. They're non-stick, so they're like a tough fabric that's been Teflon coated, so they're quite non-stick. You can buy them, I got these in Poundland. You can buy them all over the place, cook shops or discount stores, or online you can buy them Amazon, eBay, all sorts of places. So I'll be using those today, that's to stop the plastic from sticking to my sandwich toaster. And I'll be melting the plastic in between the two heated plates of this sandwich toaster. Now, why am I using a sandwich toaster instead of a toaster oven or a frying pan or whatever else? Well, because I choose to. This works really well for me, it gets to just the right temperature to melt HDPE into a soft uh, mixture. And also I can clamp this down as it's melting, which drives all the little air bubbles out and it it forces the resin to knit together. So it works really well for me, so that's why I use a sandwich toaster. Okay, the thermostat's gone off, so we're up to temperature. So one of my non-stick sheets goes in. 
150 grams that turns out to be of HDPE resin and another non-stick sheet on top and I'll just squish that down with the sandwich toaster. Now as that melts it will close up some more so I'm just going to leave that on there to heat for a little bit first. The resin has begun to melt inside there so I'm going to press this down now. I can actually hear the air squeezing out of it which is great because that's going to mean that the no air bubbles in the resin. Now my sandwich toaster just happens to accommodate a couple of these quick clamps so I can apply the pressure to squeeze the resin down using these. I have to be a bit careful right, but if I'm not I will destroy my sandwich toaster but there we go I can just put some pressure on like that that's flattening out rather nicely. For this next bit I will need gloves. HDP when it's melted is hotter than boiling water and it sticks to a lot of different things including skin so I'm going to be a little bit cautious let's see how far it's melted so far so this stuff comes out like this let's just see yeah that's doing okay actually that's doing nicely let's just see if it's going to peel off that other sheet because it, it's kind of wrinkled a little bit and I want it to flatten out so yeah, that's good, that's a nice nice block of HDP. It needs some more work because I'm looking to, for that to go completely translucent, which will indicate that it's melted all the way through. So back in the sandwich toaster again, all the way up, and top sheet on, and close it up, and then we'll clamp it shut and give it some more heat. Okay, we're now about 15 minutes in. Let's have a look at this plastic again. Oh yes, that's looking a lot better now. So it's starting to turn into a nice pancake of plastic. Right, let's carry on the cooking. Because we are getting close now to the point where we can use this plastic. Now, this is probably where I have to work fast, so I may not talk through this bit, but we'll see how it goes. So mould is open and ready. Plastic is looking good. Right, I'm gonna work with one glove because I can't pick this stuff up otherwise. Nice thin sheet of HDPE there. So that's going to go come off the sheet and that's going to go on top of my mould like so. If I can let go of it. And then very quickly my other half of my mould is going to be pressed down into place. Now I've got to be fast now and get this clamp down before it resists me. So it's already resisting me. I'm actually just going to put all of my weight on that, I think, until it starts to set. Right, turn the heater off now. We will leave that to set for half an hour and see what we've ended up with. I don't think that's gone very far into the mould, unfortunately, but time will tell. So this has been cooling now for half an hour or so. Let's undo it and see what it looks like. The moment of truth. I'm wondering if this is even going to come apart very easily actually because I think it's kind of closed up. Well that half looks okay. That half has destroyed my mould. Uh, hmm. Okay well let's just pick those bits out of there and see. Yeah. This concept needs a little bit more work, I would say. But the concept is there, and so I, I think probably the material is wrong. So I'm going to try this again another time, but uh, for now, that's uh, as far as we're going to take this experiment. So not all in all a successful project, although I'm quite happy with the definition of these pieces here, although there's a little bit of pulling you can see there where it shrunk away from that side of the mould, but 
that's not a bad result. It's a very rigid piece and it's straight and so on. So I don't know, I call this a probably about a 50% success, really. It, it's absolutely no use as an artist's mixing palette. Those are tiny little wells. I should have thought that through a bit better and maybe made four slightly larger ones or something. Anyway, that's uh, as far as I'm going to take this experiment, I think, for now. So thanks for watching, and maybe we'll do this again in future and with a bit more success.